Hello. Hello. We have one attendee. All right. The meeting is just about to start. Yeah. Yeah. Mommy, what? You should take my box of whole yeah. foods vegetables. And put it in the basement. Mommy, are you working? Mm hmm. All right, Sarah's here somewhere. Yes, hello. Hello. Hi. I had my volume off, that's why I didn't hear you back. So. Did you um, start the meeting yet? We're recording. We are recording. Okay. So if somebody shows up, I'll be able to see. Bennett said he'd be late. I haven't heard from anyone else. Ellen's joining. All right. We will have a quorum. Sarah, are you there? She's muted. Yes, I'm here. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, can we have a quorum with her and not showing her picture or? We're eating dinner right now. Okay, that's fine. I'll turn my camera on in a little bit. <laughs> okay, let's wait a couple more minutes, see if uh, anyone else joins. Since Bennett's going to be late, um, who wants to take uh, minutes or who will take minutes? I can take minutes. Thank you. Sorry, I'm at my son's soccer game. I can't. <laughs> okay. Just on my phone. Yeah. Um, let's. Um, Two hours while we're here. Um, come on. Let me just bring up the thing. Okay. Uh, Sarah, how many hours? This is for two months, I guess, because we didn't take hours in August. Okay. Ellen, how many hours? Um, I'd say three. That includes the picnic and the planting and the meeting and anything else you did. Um, okay, four. Okay. Britt? Um, I wasn't at the picnic. I guess three. Okay. Uh, I probably have... Uh, Maybe 14 for the two months. Sarah, are you still there? Yep, two hours for me. Including the picnic and the planting, you weren't at planting, okay. Yeah, we weren't there. Yeah. Uh, Shoshana and Julian, we'll wait for them. All right, uh, good. Let's officially start the meeting. We seem to have no guests. Um, can we approve the minutes or do we not have enough people who are there to do that? There we go. These are the July minutes? Yes, July 9th. Uh, I was there. You have any corrections or changes? Uh, I don't think so. 
I did read through them when you sent them, but let me just pull them up. Yeah, I'm I'm I guess I took the minute, so I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um Ellen, you weren't there. Are you all done eating, sweetheart? Um, I was there in July, I believe. I have to check my calendar. Um <laughs> I edited one thing in the minutes to include who wasn't there, so I can see that in a second. Um, Ellen was not oh, there. Oh, no, I, I was away that week. Yeah, I was away that week. All right, let's table the minutes for now and uh, get on with the main agenda. Uh, okay, so it starts with public comments, but there's no public. Committee reports, the chair's report. Um, I thought the picnic was a big success and uh, the planting was good. Um, what else do I have? I have links. I heard back from the Norwalk uh, tree warden about, I don't know if you saw the pictures that I sent out, that uh, they had put these grates around the trees to protect them and the trees had grown into the grates and were getting strangled by that. So I wrote a letter to the uh, I sent an email to the tree warden there and finally heard back. Um, turns out those trees are on private property and they have reached out to the owner, but they're not sure that there's anything they can do. So, uh, the grates were fancy and looked great. It was a great thing to do to protect the trees, but you can't leave them there when the tree gets big. So, All right, where was this? I'm just going to put Norwalk, Norwalk Connecticut. Oh, Norwalk, got it. Okay. Um, I reached out to Mindy, but never heard back. So I will try that again in terms of trying to do a planting at the boulders and Watson farm. Uh, the town hall garden that's on the agenda. Um, Jones library retaining wall. I asked Alan about it, if that would affect trees. It's not really in our purview, but I think it's something we should keep a watch on. And there's a guy named Justin Ann, A-N, who filled out a volunteer form and uh, I was hoping he would come today, but actually somebody was an attendee. Let's see if, no, it's Julian, let me make him a panelist. Okay, good. Um, uh, anyway, he's not here, so that happens sometimes. Volunteers get excited and then don't show up, but maybe he'll come again. Um, I have the tree tour, the list of trees from the Greenfield tree tour, if anybody's interested, I could send it to them. So just send me an email. And then uh, we heard from somebody at 179 North Whitney who lost a tree and wanted it replaced. I mentioned it to Alan. Um, we should probably talk about that at the meeting. And then two other things that just came up. One is walking um, through downtown on that uh, the downtown planning uh, meeting that happened on Saturday, Friday, whenever that was, Friday. And uh, notice the ashes near Kendrick Park and in Kendrick Park are dying fairly quickly. And I'm wondering if we should do a planting soon to get new trees in to replace them. So I want us to talk about that. And then the last thing that's also on the agenda, but should we change the October tree planting day because it's the Jewish holiday of Yom Kippur? The following Saturday is also a Jewish holiday, but not quite as important. But anyway, uh, that's what I have. Julian, anything to add for your report? Uh, nothing specifically. Um, I was thinking about the downtown design standards, as were you. Um, so that's really my only thing. Okay. Um, it was good that I was on the walk Friday afternoon and Shoshana was there and uh, I was pointing out places where the tree pits are so small and the trees weren't thriving. And somebody was asking, how come there's all this dead wood on all these trees? And I explained the whole process of how we do pruning and stuff like that and about budgetary problems and staff problems. So Yeah. Is the woman on Northeast Street or on North Whitney Street the same 
Um, is that woman the same woman who came up to me? I'm trying to think. Do you remember her name? I don't remember her name. Okay. Yeah, because we were working on some trees up there and someone came out and said, hey, we'd really like to get some new trees put in this location, yada, yada, yada. Okay, see if you can find the location and check in with Alan about that at least. Yeah, it was, it was right near the intersection with, I believe, Grove Street, um, but across the street. You know where I'm talking about, Alan? On North Whitney? Yeah. Hmm. Like the yellow house, and then there was a woman next to it in a white house who came out. Um, I think her name might have been Sarah. Um, and she was asking about trees. Yeah, I have not. That's, that person has not reached out to me. That ah, sounds good. Okay. Okay. And um, Julian's uh, been texting me when he checks in on the uh, nursery. So that's on the agenda, I think. Also, let me see. Actually, I printed out the agenda so I don't have to go back and forth. Yeah, that's on this. So we'll talk about that soon. All right. Uh, Tree Warden's report. Alan. Uh, I don't have a lot to update on. Um, we're in uh, a bit of a dry spell. So it's been tricky to uh, keep up with the watering of the, the plants and the new plants on the North Common that we have to keep alive and the, the um, new grass on the North Common, which we have to keep alive. Um, so yeah, it's the drought, it's not drought. I'm not, I don't want to say so. It's just with a lack of rain, um, yeah. it is putting a lot of pressure on trying to keep trees. We've got planted some last year and all the ones we did this year. Um, hydrated so um yeah i don't uh really have much update on it, so. okay um i was gonna ask you something i forgot all right uh let's keep on treasurer's report i have no update i got thrown off with the schedule change i'm sorry that's okay um, we have the problem with the encumbrance that needs to be resolved, um, uh, the payment for removals, and that donation. Make sure that that was from my notes. Make sure the donation got into our account. All right, so if you can keep us updated on that, at least by next meeting. Yes. Great. Okay, social media update. Shoshana is not here, but uh, Julian? I don't think I have any update. Only thing is, if anybody got photos from the planting, send them my way and I can post them on Instagram. Okay, I did uh, get one photo I posted on right. Facebook. I will send it to you. Yeah. I have a few, Julian. I, I think I can text them to you or okay. email. Excellent. Okay. Either works. Great. Um, all right. Tree nursery care. Julian? That's, all, that's also me. Um, last time when I was still working for Alan, went over there, trimmed it down, um, and made sure all the trees were watered and healthy. There's still that line that, um, of I believe, oaks that are not, that are dead. Um, and then I brought uh, 20 trees that were, hmm, I'm forgetting the name, Dawn Redwoods. Um, from the Shade Tree Commission in Northampton, brought them over here in my truck, dropped them off at Tree and Grounds. Um, and I believe some are in the nursery and some are at Tree and Grounds, is that correct? If you can tell me the Latin name for Don Redwood. Don Redwood. <laughs> Answer that question. Latin. Meta, Meta Sequoia something. Yeah, Meta Sequoia Glyptostriboides. There it is, <laughs> yeah. Glyptos what? Meta Sequoia Glyptostriboides, I believe. Yeah. Wow. I, sh I will say that in my plants in the landscape class tomorrow, yes. and Dr. Ethan Carr will be quite impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have 20 Don Redwoods, and my goal, my plan was to take out the oaks, the 10 oak trees that um, didn't make it, I never even leafed out. Um, we can put the Don Redwoods, 10 of those in there. I can buy some more grow bags, which I need to do anyway, and we can put the other 10 in grow bags and grow those Don Redwoods out. Um, so 
if the committee wants to be involved, um, yes, can try to we schedule to a involved. time to do that. This is our project. We want to be involved, right? <laughs> yes. Should we so do they need to be? They just need to be planted in grow bags. Yeah, right now they're in small containers. Okay. Um, they're about three feet tall. Some less than three feet, maybe two. Um, so they need to be upgraded into something where they can mature to a planting size. Should we do an um, extra? I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I know Don Redwoods leave, lose their needles. Um, is it better to do it sooner rather than later? Or like, does that affect timing of transplantation or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, um, if we wait till they drop their needles, they're less likely to have you know shock from being transplanted. They're, they might be a little bit pop bound right now. Um, so yeah, they, they, we, they are. Yeah. So maybe we should wait till the needles drop um, and then transplant them into larger little bags. OK. You want to keep us posted on when you think that would be, and we could do an extra workday or have it as the October or November workday. Okay. I don't know how late they lose needles. I'll watch the one that I have here that I planted. So see I've, I've got one next door. I'll keep an eye out. Good. I think it might be kind of late. Might be. So maybe the November planting is a, a work day in the tree nursery. We can also do more mulching and things like that then. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, anything else so, on the nursery? So do we want to... Um, I would like to purchase another, you know, 40 trees next spring, get the order in this winter. Um, so we need to come up with species again. The red maples, we the, the non-varietal red maples that we selected are doing great. Um, the two poplars are doing okay. Um, some of those died, but they've sprouted again from the, the roots, so they'll be okay. Um, and then, um, Oh goodness! What were the the um, hackberry? Are, um, they're going to be a little bit slow to get established again. So then they're going to hackberries are definitely going to need a year or two in the grow bag, probably. The red maples will be ready to plant next next spring. Okay. Well, I was looking at the tree inventory, and there's a lot of species with very few. Um, specimens in town. So I was thinking maybe we should focus on those. Um, three maples are the highest ones. Mm -hmm. Some of the oaks were pretty common, but I was thinking, um, you know, black gum is a good tree. Um, there's a few others that would be slow to get started. It might be good to get in the nursery. Yep. Sweet gum, black gum, mine, things we don't have a lot of. Do we want to choose? Let's choose those varieties now, can we? Does everybody have a copy of their tree inventory? Can I find mine? Start at the back. There's the fewest species. Don Redwood. <laughs> There's only we'll one in the now. public way. It's a very nice summary. American persimmon. Smoke bush. I wouldn't plant a beech tree. No. Bald cypress. We've been planting bald cypress and end on redwoods, but uh, they didn't get counted in the inventory because they're too small. Um, they count staghorn sumac as a tree? Looks like it. That's, uh, I don't believe for one second that there's only one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Nor is it a tree. Uh, we didn't, have we, to didn't we have hickories in the um, in the nursery now? Or did no. we just give those out for Arbor Day? Yeah, we gave those out. For Arbor yeah. Day. yeah. Hickory would be one. Yeah, hickories are nice. 
I thought we had some, didn't we? No, it's oh. the Hackberry. I don't think they had, hickories weren't available. By the time I got the order in, I think hickories were sold out. Might we do an evergreen? Meh. No? You mean grow an evergreen? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What kind? I'm um, looking balsam fir. There's only a well, it's not evergreen. It's what's that? False. Sorry, no. Sorry, sorry. My bad. Yes, balsam fir. A bit of a. It's got some pest problems, which I love catalpas. Me too, but uh, they're not super hardy, are they? Yeah, and they're pretty big. Well, uh, big is what we want. Not for every space, though, right? No. Um, How about sourwood? We've been plant we've planted some sourwood. There's a lot of people don't like the sourwood because it. Um, oh, sorry. No, sourwood um, is tricky to grow. Yeah, it's very slow um, to get established. Which maybe they're extremely expensive to buy and they're mm. rare to buy. So maybe that would be a good thing too. Um, yeah, something slow to grow. We can leave in the nursery for three or four years. Yeah. Quaking aspen. Not much in the way of like a big crown, right? But short lived too. Fast growing. Are they so, okay? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Horn beams. Horn beams What's are that? pretty. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Horn bean? Yeah, I like that one. I love silver maples, but I guess we have a lot. <laughs> yeah. We can tie, try the Turkish filberts again, hazelnuts. Mm. We didn't do that well with them last time, but I'm doing well with them on my property. Does that variety get pretty large or is it kind of shrubby? No, they get 30 feet tall and they're pyramidal okay. shape, so they fit under wires and things like that. Okay. Um, so white fur. Okay. That might be, that's an evergreen. It's relatively pest free. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of places in the public way to plant those. Mm -hmm. but, um, we also do should we be considering more native species as well. So. I'm mostly looking at natives, but uh, yeah. The, the uh, Machia, Emerencia. Marensis. Um, that's a very good urban tree, a very hardy urban tree. It's not native, but medium size, small to medium. Where would it be listed? I don't see it. It's on. Well, what's the There's number? Seven of them. Seven, seven of them in time. All of which I Thanks. probably planted. Sure. All right, so we I've come up with a list of nine that we could narrow it down from of the less okay. common trees in town. Should I read them? Sure. I have uh, black gum, sourwood, white fir, hickory, bald cypress, dawn redwood, hornbeam, Turkish hazel, and Machia. So you lost me at white fir after that. After white fir is hickory, bald cypress, dawn redwood we already have, so we'll cross that off. Um, hornbeam, Turkish hazels, and Machias. How does everyone say their favorite?
Brit? I didn't hear all those because I was getting food for my kids. Um, I heard hornbeam. Okay. Turkish macchias, I don't know. Turkish hazels or macchia. Yeah, I don't know macchia that well. Oh, Turkish either. hazel. Those look pretty. Very broad crown. Sarah? Um, we mentioned the sour wood. Did that get nixed for some reason? No, it's on there. That's on there? Yeah. I like that one. Um, I also like some oaks if we wanted to put a couple on there. Yeah, we could. I was thinking that try to do some of the less popular species in town. Mm -hmm. But scarlet oak is on lower on the list. Burr oak is low on the list. Okay. Right now we don't have any oaks, right? The oaks all died? Correct. So yeah, let's do one oak. I think that's a good idea. Which is, you think, the hardiest oak to grow? I, I like the idea of the burr oak. Um, sure. Okay. We've been planting a lot of uh, swamp white oak and white oak. So yeah. burr oak would be good mix. Okay, so Burr Oak Sourwood, Julian. Consider doing more tulip poplar trees. We have some growing already. Okay, yeah. We could do more though. All right, I'm trying to narrow it down. We keep adding new ones, but <laughs> that's okay. Uh, Ellen, can you respond? Yes, um, I unfortunately do not have the list in front of me. Um, so I defer to all of your expertise. And my son just scored the only goal. So. Yay. <laughs> but I am listening, I promise. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's left black gum, white fir, hickory, bald cypress, tulip, hornbeam, Turkish hazel, and macchia. If we do burrow guitarwood. So I, I would, like black gum. I mean, they're pretty. I like black yeah. gum too. Yeah. But we've been planting black gum. They they like moist soil, so they're, they're limited in the location, but they're they're great trees. So I like what's them. what's the availability of the macchia, Alan? If we were going to get them, I'm I'm just thinking if they're a really good street tree, but they're not a native, maybe we want to focus them in a, in a harsher urban environment, like a, like the downtown. Mm -hmm. And if we are going to plant there, we're, we want something that's going to be pretty sizable yeah. um, when we install it. So I'm wondering if that's a species that we buy from a nursery and, as opposed to putting in our nursery and trying to grow up. Mm -hmm. um, or if you had a thought on, you know, buying now and small versus buying mm -hmm. later larger. Great point. I don't even know if they're available from the supplier that we purchased our bare material from. I can look in di at different suppliers, but um, you're right. It is a tree that we have generally been planting. We have done some lawn planting to those for people, um, but it is a tree that you would want to put in a tough environment. So I have no problem leaving it to the professionals to grow. So. I think in the interest of having some evergreens, I would go with white fir for the fourth tree. We have black gum, sourwood, and bur oak. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, is that a decision then? We'll do black gum, sourwood, white fir, and bur oak. Sound good? Ellen and Britt? Sounds fine to me. Those are all native species? Yes. Okay. No. White fur, white fur, I don't believe oh, no, white fur. Right, right. Yeah, sorry. But it's hardy and grows well here. Yes. And people won't complain about it not being native. That sounds good. Okay. Okay. Good, good decision. 
All right, next, second Saturday workday. Um, sounds like November we'll plan to do the tree nursery. And then what are we going to do for October? I was hoping we could do, get that grant to one of the environmental justice neighborhoods, but that's obviously not going to happen this year. So um, does anyone remember all the locations we've had in mind? September, oh, sorry, um, October. I think we we're going to try to squeeze Northampton Road in. We had discussed oh. it. Okay, um, that's a good choice. It's a tough one. A lot of different property owners to talk to. I did start that conversation um, back in August with some of the property owners. Um, but uh, I could try to pull that off, get 10 okay. trees or so in. Sounds good. Is that it? We agreed to that? Just for note taking purposes, I had to pop off for 60 seconds because my kid has pneumonia and they were the doctor was calling. Um, this is for a, a planting uh, in an environmental justice community, correct? Just so I write it down correctly. No, we didn't. Uh, I, I've reached out to Mindy about that and she didn't get back to me. So we're, we haven't moved ahead with we don't have a location. So I think that's waiting. So this is a different planting for October. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Henry, do you know the deadline for that grant or what or what who authorizes it? Do you want me to research it? Uh, I have the information. I've forgotten at this point. It's been so long. It's, uh, it's the state um, DCR Urban Forestry Program has a grant out there for environmental justice neighborhoods for tree planting. Um, this is this is it's like part you of get for a hundred thousand dollars for tree planting. Um, yeah, like, this is the yeah, big yeah. state um, yeah. initiative. Yeah, okay, good. All right, yeah. If do you want to send me the link? Um, I'd be happy to look at it. Um, I have a lot of well, I have more time on my hands right now, and I have a lot of grant writing experience. So if it's something that can be done sooner than later, I'm happy to take the lead on that. But I just don't know if we've missed the deadline. Yeah, we wouldn't. Anything we get, I think November. Yes, the deadline was August 2nd. Oh, ah, shoot. But there might really? be another, another one. What, what does, what's the state agency on that one, Henry? Uh, I'm a terrible note taker. I attended that workshop about it. I don't have that written down. I think DCR's grant is um, November, intend to apply November 1st, I think. No, this was the new money and it included um, Targeted tree planting for shade trees. It include pavement removal, soil remediation, and all kinds of other stuff. Equipment for watering and care. Um, yeah, it was a pretty interesting. It would have covered flexible pavement and you know um, structural soil and things like that. So. Ellen, I'll try to find the DCR link that I know I, about. I just yeah. found the DCR one, and it's um, it's got a matching requirement. It's it is less of a match than their normal stuff. It's like twenty five percent or something. Um, it's fifty fifty unless it's an environmental justice neighborhood, in which is in which case it's seventy five twenty five. Yeah. The, the deadline is um, you need to submit an intent to apply letter by October first, and the applications due November first. Okay, that works for us. Okay. Um, yeah, if you could send me. I think that would be great. As I said, I just um, I have some availability now, so um, it sounds like a really good thing too. So I'd be okay, happy to, I'll send to do it. that. Thank you, thank you, Brett. Sorry about that. So we're all having son kid issues. My son just arrived back from France, and he's in Boston. And anyway, yeah. Darn kids. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Um, good. So yeah, you researched that. I mean, we in the past when we've talked about these grants, we end up not having the people power to to pursue it. So um, yeah, if there's someone who really took the initiative and we really got going, that might be good. Um, all right. Um, what's next on the agenda? The town hall garden. So we have um, we have the seven, I think it was seven fifty dollars from the, the Garden Club of Amherst, um, and then we had uh, need to come up with another two, it's like twenty three hundred dollars or so, to purchase the rest of the plant material. Um, from the plans that Sarah uh, came up with. And they're beautiful. I'm not sure if everybody's seen it, but it's a really nice dense planting uh, in front of town hall. So we weren't able to come up with funds um, from town hall to do this or from the plot, the project. So I, I asked and got permission to spend money from my uh, tree planting fund, the $40,000 for removal, stump grinding, and tree planting. Um, so take a couple thousand dollars out of that to purchase the plant material um, to do this. I don't know right now if we can get all the plant material or whether we want to try to, to do part of the planting this fall, uh, maybe with some of the larger plants, and then in the spring, do another planting um, to fill in all the other spaces. Um, so I believe that I've been meaning to reach out to Sarah um, to sit down with her and go over the plans and kind of come up with a, a plan how we could you know, do this in two phases. That would also give us a B City USA um, project for this year, 2024, and then the spring 2025. We could be also be planting um, for that uh, membership requirement. I'm just thinking in the bed itself, if we're going to be planting, are we going to be doing like half of the bed and then the other half? Or are we going to be like sparsely putting them in and then sort of filling in um, later? Sarah? Sarah? Um, I would recommend doing the woody material, putting in the shrubs now. now. Um, and then, and I suppose if there was budget and availability on any of the perennials, we could do that. Um, some of the fall late blooming grasses could probably go in and look nice right this time of year. Um, and then, you know, the, the perennials waiting until the spring, I think makes sense. Uh, and so it, it, it it would not be half and half. It would be the entirety of the bed done in phases. Sounds good. Um, Sarah, do you want to, I know you're really busy, so I hate asking you to. <laughs> no, I'd be happy to. I've been meaning to reach out to you too, Alan. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, if we just sit down or through email or whatever, select what we want to plant this fall. I can get those quotes out, get get some pricing and we could um get it in the ground. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I can do that. Um I am available. I can do evenings. Um and if you if you have availability during the work day, I can do like early afternoon. Mm -hmm. Typically Monday through Wednesday. Are good times. I think I have to inspect the tree in front of your house. Yes. Um, so I could probably stop by to do that at uh, some point this week. Um, I don't know what your availability is. Can you do Wednesday between one and three? Yes, I can. Great. How about um, uh, like one o'clock? That's great. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let me help you. I'm not opposed to this project in the least. I like the project. I am concerned it's taking 
our time and money away from trees, which is our focus. Um, and the other thing I want to bring up, uh, it's not a, it's not a, a rejection of this process. It's just a thought. But one thing I am concerned with the new town common and the way the um, the town hall has been redone, the street in front of it, it's a huge heat island. There are far fewer trees than I expected would be on the new common. And I would like to see if we can add a few more trees along South Pleasant Street and something to put some trees near near that intersection with the town hall is. It, it was quite harsh when we were there um, Friday. So, I mean, the London plane trees that are planted along Main Street right down to um, the Boltwood, Boltwood Ave there, um, you know, those will get large and provide shade, obviously. Uh, and there's some, there's a uh, Yoshino cherry, I think, on the corner too, and the, the Yellowwood on the corner of Town Hall. So there, there will be shade right in front of Town Hall. No, it's it's all hardscape, you know, like yeah. it was before. There were, there were no trees there really, except for the birch. Um, so it was all asphalt had, before. We had the birches breaking up Town Hall before, so. And it looks like some of those trees didn't make it. Um, the ones Correct. along Main Street, yeah. Yeah, the um, there's a the cherries. The ones that didn't make it are all cherry, and they they don't like being planted in the spring in leaf. Um, so they struggle. The contractor who planted them has to replace them. So, okay, great. Here's a thought. What about making an extra work day? Um, sort of a secondary time. That way we're not taking time away from what we're spending on other trees. We're just sort of adding this to the agenda, if you will. Um, making another work day, going out there, doing the planting or doing the planting on an original work day that we were gonna have and mixing in planting, replanting some of the trees that died on the common at the same time that we do the planting. That way we're sort of mixing the trees and ground aspect, not doing one or the other, if that makes any sense. That's a good idea, although I think these trees would be replaced by the contractor, right, Alan? Well, that's where, I'm not sure what's gonna happen now. Like we're, we'd, we'd like to break our ties with the contractor and get this project completed. So they may end up just giving us the money. We're going to do it ourselves. Um, I'm not sure where we're, where we're at with that. So. I think that's a great idea, Julian, to combine the two. Yeah, and you know, I wonder if there's also, so I think planting a native garden in front of town hall is also something that people are going to be excited about potentially people who are not excited about trees all the time or don't have trees on their radar and so I wonder if there's a way to use it as an advantage to get new people engaged and caring about trees um you know because I mentioned to you at the event that my students did um at the farmer's market in June no May um I had, you know, several dozen, probably more than 50 people, maybe even more than that, I have to count it, um, sign up to support native plants and, you know, be city idea. And I wonder if, you know, this is a way to bring those people in who don't necessarily care about trees um, into the work of our committee that is focused on trees. So it's just just a thought, and you know, I I could think creatively about that, and I I know there was some talk about like keeping this quiet until or not quiet, but like not widely publicized, just like get it done. Um. So I don't know if we want to like solicit lots of volunteers for this or not, but anyway. Yeah, I I have no objection to having volunteers involved with it. So. Okay. If we were going to end up doing the tree planting and the shrub and flower planting at the same time, I think more volunteers would probably be helpful. 
Yeah. And use it as a chance to get, you know, other people signed up to do, to learn about the tree committee and, and help with future plantings too, I think. So I could see about getting the, um, if, if the town is going to be doing the tree planting, then obviously if it's going to, we're replacing cherry trees that didn't make it, um, fall would be a better time to plant them or early, early spring before they leaf out. Um, I can look in to see whether we're going to be doing it in-house and then try to line everything up for November or late October. I don't know. Could we do it instead of Northampton Road in October? We could. Okay. I think that's better. I want to keep November, I think, is a good time for the tree nursery. Um. So, um, I'm sorry, my brain froze. So, all right, so we're gonna, do we agree that we'll work on, on this project and we'll do it in conjunction with planting trees? Yeah. Okay. And the date is TBD or what are we thinking for that? Oh, that's right, that's the next question. Should we do it on the second Saturday? I wouldn't be able to be there. I don't know who else wouldn't be able to be there. It may be harder to get other volunteers on that day for if we're doing a big volunteer thing. I'm not available that weekend. Yeah. Right, it's October 12th. Yeah. Yeah, so, I'm out of town that weekend. It's Indigenous Peoples Day weekend. So a lot of kids have, uh, all the kids have off school, public offices are closed, I think, so. All right, should we do the, Second Saturday planting on the third Saturday in October, October 19th. I think that works for me. Okay. Good. All right, let's do that then. So the second Saturday will be October 19th. And um, get that word out on um, Facebook and uh, Instagram. Do you post on Facebook or you still can't, Julian? I cannot log into Facebook. Shoshona is in charge of that. Okay. I'm on can you can you reach out to her to do that? Yeah, I, I've tried. There was some sort of difficulty with the password she was mentioning. No, no so reach I, out to have her post. About, oh yeah, absolutely. About <laughs> the second Saturday being the third yeah. Saturday. Good. Okay. Um, the next on the agenda: environmental justice, neighborhood planting, which we already talked about. I reached out to Mindy; it didn't hear back. I will try to reach out to her again at some point. Um, solar farm position. We started working on a statement and then we bogged down and never got anywhere. Do we want to bring that up again? No? <laughs> okay. I'll take that for a no. Um, New members, you know, people are reaching out to us, but we're not developing new members. Um, I'm on for another three years. I think someone else is reappointed, maybe Shoshana. So I think we're doing okay, but we should keep in mind, at least bring in new volunteer people. So it'd be great to have a, we used to have several people who came to meetings and plantings and that's dwindled a bit. My term expires next year. So that's I think June or July of 2025. Yeah. I'm done. Are they three year terms? Yes. I think mine expires next year too. Mine so, does as well. So whether or not we we all stay on, it'd still be good to reach out. If you know anyone who's really interested in trees, let's try to get more people and more energy into the group. I think it'd be good. Anyone else have anything to say about this? No. All right. Um, do we want to talk more about B City? We're in old and ongoing items, or should we table that for now since we are doing this project? I I'll just say that I have you know I had two members of town council who had offered to sponsor this as something that uh, as a resolution basically that would be presented to the council, um, and then they both like ghosted me and I haven't heard back from them in several months despite several emails and running into one of them in town. So I don't, I, I guess I will just keep emailing them and hope to run into them, but 
Okay. I haven't heard back. Let's table it for now. We also have the issue of the three hundred dollars with we join B to join B City. So, all right. Um, the Mary Maple table. Is there anything new on that? Uh, I saw the director of the Jones today. <laughs> I forgot her name. Um. Anyway, they are very excited to have it in the future, but that's just an aside. Um, and I have no information on what the town hall people think. Okay. <laughs> it's still in your, your shed? It, it's in my living room because I got worried about it not being climate control. <laughs> so it's like next to my back door, not being, you know, occasionally a cat will jump on it, but it's it's out of harm's way mostly. So. No, you, I'm more worried about your kids jumping on it, but yeah. They, they won't jump on it. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy it, I guess. Um, the town tree inventory and the management plan. I think what we got from that company looks really nice and it's very helpful. Um, Alan, you want to talk more about it? Yeah. Um, so uh, I sent it to Henry. Henry sent the um, PDF version of the uh, final summary report to everybody. You may not have had a chance to look through it. Um, you know, it's, it's standard sort of tree inventory kind of information. Um, they also are not included in this was um, sort of the ecosystem services of some of this of the trees and things like that. So that's a different, um, something else I, I guess I need to forward on to everybody. Um, I mean, for me, the, the, the pages aren't numbered. So it's uh, one, two, three, Third page of the report, recommended maintenance. Um, so the primary maintenance, you know, they have things like removals, priority prune, routine prune, training prune, stump removal, plant. Um, so, I mean, obviously a remove is a tree that's either dead or close to being dead and pre presents some sort of um, risk. So it may be green and look healthy, but it has significant structural defect, which requires it should be removed. So they, they identified 440 trees that need removal. Um, so I need to go in now to the inventory and find these 440 trees in the inventory, do the assessment and prioritize which ones need to come down first. We take down on, a, on average, we take down about 200 trees a year in town. Um, and that's a tree that ranges from six inches, anything six inches in diameter and bigger is what I consider to be a tree. So anything under six inches that we remove doesn't get counted in that. Um, so there's 440 trees that I need to put my eyes on and act on. And so that, you know, the $40,000 that we have, um, for 20,000 that is for tree planting. And then that the other 20,000 is for um, stump grinding and, and tree work contracting. So, and you figure out where to best use that money. Um, below that is priority prune. So priority prune doesn't mean there's an immediate risk or anything, um, but it's something that's pretty serious and should be looked at very quickly and taken care of. Um, in the near future. So there are 500, 513 trees that have a priority prune on them. And then after that, it's like a routine prune. Routine prune is just crown clean, take out dead wood, something that we just don't do very often unless it's in a, a park or on a common. Um, so there are you know 4,900 trees that have routine prunes. So they identified 156 that need um, training so they're young trees that if we could prune them now will reduce problems later on with the tree so training the trees to grow structurally sound um, um so, Alan, yeah if um that sounds like something the committee could work on well i, I don't know the, the training yeah yeah so they did not inventory trees under six inches in diameter. Oh, I see, okay. So, because um, we would have used up all of our money 
identifying saplings on the side, <laughs> side of the road. So I chose that was the cutoff size for um, things not to identify. Um, is there such a thing as a staghorn sumac that is greater six inches in diameter or greater? Yes. There is. Okay. That oh, doesn't... I've seen them. Yes, they get big. They can actually, okay. yeah, they're like a, they grow like a, you know, uh, Kusa dogwood, you know. There's a kind of... massive staghorn sumac, like, I mean, massive tree, like sugar maple tree size, um, out in the woods behind my house. And huh. It, it's gotten it's gotten quite large so in the right conditions they can they okay. can grow interesting can i can i ask a question instead of just making random comments um um the trees that need that you need to get eyes on alan the 450 identified for potential removal do they give you are those geolocated like you have the data on where you need to go to find them or no yes yes okay good so that's the joy, the wonders of, you know, the inventory is that we we now have a point on a map with all this data attached to it. So um, each tree and its condition and its rating and what they they found about it is there. So um, what percentage of the roads have been inventoried? What did this cover? Yeah, um, more than our past inventory. Um, so we refreshed the inventory that was over 12 years old. And then we added new streets to that. So um, I haven't tried to figure out like the percentage yet, but ballpark figure we're somewhere around 70% or so of our roads being inventoried. Um, there's a lot of roads which are wooded that we didn't do. So Bay Road did not get inventoried. Bay Road is very long and very wooded. Henry Street, um, you know, um, those roads, country roads in Amherst that you drive um, that are heavily wooded, did not get inventory. So um, you know, we had 6,000 6, trees that we inventoried in 24 trees. This, you know, probably another 5,000, you know, possibly, you know, on those roads um, that we didn't inventory. We're probably never going to inventory. Um, we need to do a different type of assessment on those trees. So. so we have in Amherst on streets that have that are not forested, 6,000 plus street trees. Parks, commons, cemeteries, and roads. Yeah. Okay. And most of the roads that are not forested are in this 6,000. Correct. So there's, you know, there's 2,000 trees. Again, we're only looking at trees six inches right. larger. So um, I think it was six inches, I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, there's still a lot of trees out there that didn't get inventory that will grow into you know, trees. So it looks small, um, but there's more there. Right, so none of the trees that we have planted in the last, you know, 10 years or something yep. are, are included yeah. in that. But, and and did we go into neighborhoods like Echo Hill, Amherst Woods, Glendale? No. No. Okay. So this is all like main roads down. Well, we did go into like Echo Hill, no. Amherst Woods, no. Glendale, yes. Glendale, yes. Okay. Huh. Yeah. So how do we decide which neighborhoods we did? Um, because Amherst Woods and Echo Hill were too forested. Too forested. I see. So, yeah. um, Got it. Interesting. And then the management strategy in those more forested neighborhoods and areas is just to basically take down a tree if it falls across the road or is some sort of hazard. Yeah, you do. Um, you're really just going to, you're not going to do an inventory where you're trying to assess the condition of the tree, the health of the tree, yeah. you know, things like that. You're, you're looking at, you're doing more of a risk assessment on the tree. So you're going to very quickly identify major defects that may cause the tree to fail, so. Got it. Yeah. And those trees will replenish themselves if they're in forested areas. It's not a big concern for us. Yeah, I'm thinking of writing a op-ed piece about this. I'm gonna study the data and try to come up with a mm -hmm. uh, something. I think this is a good 
we can explain that, you know, how we got the money, what we did with it, how we will use that information and say, you know, we have 6,000 street trees on, you know, these roads and a thousand of them are in serious need of work. Some of them, are, you know, 10% will have to come down, say, of the 6,000. So and just talk about how we use the money that we have to the tree committee. Yeah, I would emphasize in that, you know, why the inventory is important, right? Like make that clear because I don't want to expose us to criticism about spending money on the inventory, you know, so like, you know, making clear like why this information is necessary and that this is a widespread practice um, that is, you know, essential for making decisions about the management of, of public trees. How much does an inventory like that cost? Uh, thirty thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. speaking. And how much did Amherst have to pay? Uh, we ended up paying about uh ten thousand. Oh, that's great. Okay, nice. Yeah, the rest was the grant. Yep. From um, DCR. DCR. Urban yeah. Forestry Program. Yeah, I mean, uh, inventory is classic. I mean, you can't you can't manage something you don't know you have. So it's basic you know, management, any good manager wants to know what they have and what condition is in and where it's they like are. A, like a tree census, maybe just yeah. Yeah. explain that, yeah. Great, uh, anything else about this? And the urban forestry management plan is gonna come, or I guess it is coming out of that. Yeah, it's it's done. Um, I submitted it with the grant submittal. Um, I want to work on it more. It's not as, as in depth as I'd like it to be. So I want to continue to um, tweak it. Um, and I want to, I'd like to be able to like, hand it over to the committee and have you kind of help do that. So. Okay. Yeah. Send it along. Okay. Awesome. Good. Anything else on this? No. Okay. I'm happy to help with any writing or editing. Thank you. All right, so then the website, uh, I don't think Bennett's done anything on that. State level initiatives, I haven't done anything on that. Significant tree ordinance, Sarah? No, okay. No. I'll, I'll keep them on the, uh, the old ongoing items part of the list. All right, and that's everything on the agenda. Uh, is there any other comments people have? Or Henry, I just want to add um, quickly that October 18th, which is a Friday, yeah. is the uh, tree steward training. It's in Springfield. Um, and uh, it's from uh, 8.30 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon, if anybody from the committee wanted to attend that training. It's no longer being held. The pandemic kind of ended the Harvard Forest, Petersham, um, option of training and they they went online and now they're going back to um, in-person training, but they've broken it up into two different locations, one in the western part of the state and one in the sort of central eastern part of the state. So um, well, that might be something we publicize. Doesn't have to be a committee member who um, goes through the training. What What is the training? It It is a crash course in urban forestry tree care. It used to be a two day training. Um, they've narrowed it down to just one day. So you used to get tree ID, uh, proper tree planting, tree health, tree care, pruning, um, uh, kind of the overview of urban forestry and, and tree warden's role, I think on that. Um, it's, it's designed for citizens who want to get active in their community and how to help their community, you know, expand their programs. So. Something I could talk to Christina about getting credit for. That's right. Yeah, so you're, Julian, you're getting the, the full course. Yeah. <laughs> you're not getting the light course. A little bit like a level below, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Okay, got it. Then it's probably not worth it. Several members of the committee have taken the two-day training. Sarah, did you do that? Yes. Yeah. 
a couple years Michael, ago. Michael, uh, Michael Woodland, Hot Woodland, Woodland. Yeah. he's going to it. He emailed me. Um, he's actually going to it this year. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, we should get him back on the committee or back involved. He was if, I'm, if I'm free, I would enjoy going, but I need to take a look at my calendar. Shoshana might have done it. Or some people who are no longer on the committee have done it. So everyone's raved about it. All right. Um, good. Anything else? Alan, can you send me the link for that? I'm sorry, Henry. I said Alan, not Oh, Alan. okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am um, sorry, I've been a little distracted and I don't know if you um, already discussed this, but um, Julian and Britt came up with a good idea for December um, and I can't remember what it is. We just talked about it at the tree planting on Saturday, like a work day. Yeah, we were talking oh, yeah. about constructing the cages. Um, That's right. We're taking right. one of the winter, you know, would be planting days, um, but winter. Um, and instead um, gathering somewhere to construct the cages. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think that was a really great idea. Okay, let's do that on second Saturday in December. Sounds great. Depending on the calendar, let me see, hold on. I might be here. Yes, I'm back by then. Okay, good. All right, anything else? I'm glad we have committee comments and topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair. We can do that. All right, well, thank you, everyone. Good meeting. And um, yeah, great if you can get me those minutes soon and uh, make sure everyone remembers all the things they said they would do. Bennett. Classic Bennett. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm just <laughs> ending the meeting, literally just ending the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we are about to leave. <laughs> um, um, actually, be before we go, I didn't get minutes from a couple of people, including Bennett. Um, hold on one second. Hours. Put him on the hot oh, seat. Minutes. Too many did vote. Oh. How, How many, many voted minutes? Bennett to make you? All right, uh, Bennett, since uh, July meeting, so includes the picnic and the planting Saturday. And anyway, how many hours? Um, let's say five. Okay. Shoshana is still ahead. Julian? 10. Okay. And we had two volunteers, but they showed up late. So three volunteers. We'll do three hours for volunteer, adult volunteer hours. Okay. Um, anything to add, Bennett? Anything on the website? <laughs> I must be going now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, none of us did the things that are on the ongoing topic list. So okay. you're in good company. All right. Um, read the minutes. We, we had a good meeting. We're going to do the second Saturday planting on the third Saturday in October. Exciting. Good. Anything else we have to tell Bennett before we go? No. All right. Sorry. Bennett. It was just a compounding series of family annoyances today. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Ellen's at Let's the see Ellen's game. Uh, Britt's kid is sick. We've had a lot of family annoyances throughout the meeting. So and not my, we'll my speak for my just, own family, not yeah. anyone else's family, just mine. My son just landed back at Logan. So that's I haven't time. seen my family in a few weeks. It's been good. Wow. Oh yeah. 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 Hi. Hi. Thanks everyone. All right. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.